Update 48 was announced a couple days ago and uh, well, it's a loaded update with a brand new KVK, VIP modes, new Osiris League Grand Finals, a bunch of other things that are really cool in this update. But just like there are a lot of cool things, there are a few things that made me raise my eyebrow. I'm not so sure whether I like it or not. The ups and downs of a few things in this update in this video, in my personal opinion. So sit back, slap a like on the video and let's go. Hey there, YouTube. Welcome back to Gecko Gaming. We're back. Kind of. We're trying, but here we are. And here's the deal. A few days ago, bam, the beautiful Update 48 came out. And listen, there's a ton of things coming in here. I'm actually going to leave the first point, the most important, the big point for last, because that's the one I want to discuss the most. So we're going to slip down to point number two. Point number two is all about Champions of Olympia. They're doing a ton of optimizations and good stuff for Champions of Olympia. A little bit of markers, a little bit of color changes, a little bit of good stuff. Some shorter recovery time in your spawn zones and a bunch of other cool little optimizations for Champions of Olympia. And so that's kind of neat, but I, that's really not some of the like juicy stuff in this update. Most of it is in the first part in some of these points right here. First and foremost, point number one, certain ratio of troop units that got killed during Lost Kingdom event prior to Season of Conquest, so Season 1, 2, and 3, will also be returned after the end of the event. This is part of what I've been telling you all for many, many months now, that as Rise of Kingdoms progresses and gets older, things are going to get cheaper, things are going to get... There's going to be more items for less money, there's going to be less deads, There's they are going to make the game a little bit simplify, easier, cheaper to still... Keep some players in while dragging in new players who have been hearing a lot of uh, this is too expensive and then they come and try it out and it's a little bit cheaper than it was for most of us. So this is fantastic for newer players. Now, well, you're not going to lose as many troops as we all did in the first few KVKs. Well, I didn't lose many, right? I was a farmer. But anyway, that's not the point. Second point, we've added a new alliance log feature to make it easy for you to check the alliance events, members, battle information, and so on. I really hope this means that you can see everybody's um, everybody's battle logs, but to an extent, not all of them, because can you imagine, like, 155 members with five marches on the field, open field fighting, how many crazy amounts of reports you'd have? I would hope that rallies of your alliance do show up as battle information. The rallies that your alliance either took, your garrison, and or the rallies that you sent, those should show up there, but other than that, no open field stuff please. Uh, but then again, there is so on. So you never know what that includes. VIP 18 has been announced as well. What the heck? I mean, 1.5 million to 2 million VIP points is my guess for the next level. And guess what? I have like 760,000 and I've been VIP 17 for a while. I guess I don't spend enough. And probably most of you don't either. So rest in peace, VIP 18 for us. Hopefully the buffs are not going to be too crazy or else this might be bad as well. <laughs> So far, things are not looking too pretty. Although I'm liking the changes, they're not looking too pretty for us personally. Oh well. Anyway, point number four, modified the Osiris League Grand Finals format. Four teams will enter an Osiris League Grand Finals with the victory in the semifinals being decided by a single match in the final big match, best of three. It's what we've been telling the list. We told them that last season. It's the feedback we had from last season. And guess what? They improved it. They made it better. And now the finals... RBO3, which, I mean, they were last time too. That's how it should be. Perfect stuff. Anyway, next, they change Harold's uh, skill description. The combat remains un unchanged. That's essentially the, a way of saying we were nerfing him, but the combat hasn't changed. Of course, you guys don't know really what's behind the scenes. Just lower down the, the percentage is a little big. You know what I'm saying? Change the damage a little bit. Change the text. It's just the text damage. Don't worry about it. It's just the text that you're changing. Just make sure that that's legally complying. You know what I'm saying? Cool. Perfect. That's Lilith in a nutshell explaining how they're nerfing Harold or buffing Harold without really doing it. Improve the readability of Bastion skills. Ah, whatever. We don't care about that. Exile, a new king skill. Following the effect, a city with an active peace shield will be forced to randomly teleport to their initial province. What the heck is an initial province? Is it where you teleported into the kingdom for the first time or something like that? How on earth does Lilith keep up with where did the man enter the kingdom? I would say dump them out to furthest out to get them instead of to your 
pro starting province, you're going to get teleported to hug one of the walls of the kingdom. And that's that. That's how you kick people that are shielded in zone three out of zone three while they try to, you know, burn stuff like a King Talib type of scenario comes in mind. If there's no peace shield, well, it'll take an extra 5% extra damage for the next 30 minutes. Oh my goodness gracious. I don't want to take that, but I'll probably get exiled at some point or another. Maybe. Maybe not. Anyway, but let's go into point number one. Point number one is the big one. That is where the money is. And that is the Lost Kingdom. The brand new Lost Kingdom. Point number one of this update. I mean, it's a big boy. It's a huge boy. Because guess what? Trojan Horse was indeed a Trojan Horse. It was there, but it really wasn't. Gone it goes. And so the March of the Ages is upon us. Coming soon. It'll be live in the Kingdoms of the Two weeks after the update. Bumble Cladla. Sure. That always ends well. Heroic Anthem, two thumbs up. It was definitely, see, that's two thumbs up. That right there, yeah, it was terrible. First time being the test server. No titles for half of the damn thing. Most events didn't work correctly. Needed to get hotfixed for them to work. Good luck, have fun to whoever will end up being the first ones to test this out. Hopefully it's not K2, but maybe it will be. And if it is, I mean, we'll be there, I guess. Anyway, a new KVK type. Conflict and war is not simple. Simply confined to the old clash of barbarianism. Damn. Versus civilization. Well, damn, these guys went ham. We fight to recover our ancestors' legacy from the barbarians, but know that wisdom, deception, and trickery come with more advanced civilizations too. Okay, well, I guess. Thus, we exercise utmost cautious in all, caution in all affairs. Our hope falls to the ancient pagodas, now and in the coming dawn. The only question is, when is the moment, when the, that moment comes, will we meet the morning sun or arrows at dawn? Well, I definitely butchered that last sentence. But anyway, kingdom participating in the new, in the season of conquest have the opportunity to experience a whole new story. March of the ages. Governor, our governors are no longer able to move wherever they please in this new mode, but must instead trek to victory by carefully planning their base sphere of influence and army of, to seize the momentum, I guess. Super large map, March of the Ages map are twice the size of any other story maps. Ancient pagodas governors are no longer are no longer free to move their cities wherever they will. They must first establish a foundation stone around an ancient pagoda under their control to move cities. Forward camps, governors can establish forward camps of the Front lines, which are critically important structures for healing troops and supplying reinforcements. Governors carefully place their forward camps to contribute, will contribute significantly to the victory on the map. The supply radius of supply, the supply radius, the supply radius, again, is an area centered around a governor's city or forward camp for garrison, garrison troops. And, huge, and hugely impacts your troops' ability to do damage. Governors should try to limit their engagements within the supply radius as much as possible to ensure troops can continue to deal full damage. Derelict passes. The map is scattered with abandoned passes, so derelict as, as to be impossible to control or traverse. This throws a chaotic element into the mix for every kingdom at the beginning as each faces a different set of strategic choices. Governors must uh, proactively plan and discuss how to overcome such challenges. First and foremost, let's start with the good stuff. Let's start with the positives, okay? Huge thumbs up to Lilith for coming up with another KVK mode. It's not that easy to come up with KVKs. We now have KVK Season 1. We have KVK Season of Conquest which comes in Heroic Anthem and Strife of Eight. We also have Light versus Darkness, four different KVK modes. We've come a long way, and this is our fifth KVK story journey. So two thumbs up to Lilith. Great work. You guys keep grinding and making the game more interesting, more exciting. And this time you bring us brand new mechanics, brand new everything by the looks of it. And truthfully, I'm stoked to see what you guys came up with and what is going to be all of this. And so what I am concerned with i'm more of a skeptical individual i understand who i am dealing with i understand that you guys are that you guys are very ambitious lilith and i and lego and i understand that um you guys intend on doing good things and 
try and this tells me that you guys are really trying to keep the game more interesting for older players as well as newer players to always have something to look forward to okay so there are extreme positives in here i think that every single point in here is a great point for new stuff for discoverability and all that okay i am not knocking what i'm about to say is not all that i don't think it's all negative but i do want to give you a perspective of a skeptical individual of someone who can see also the negative that can come out of all of this and i think that it's important to also discuss that in as a content creator right and so here's the deal there are many 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 mechanics that are introduced in this game mode that have not seen the daylight yet and if you would have told me you know there's something like a forward camp or an ancient pagoda or a supply radius or a derelict passes type of mechanic in any other game mode that is that has war in it, not like Ark of Osiris or um, uh, Champions of Olympia, but an actual like thing that you do on the map, an event kind of like a, like a Shadow Legion where it pops on your map, you kind of do things with it and then it disappears. Then I would be a little happier knowing that these mechanics have been thoroughly tested by a big load of players coming into the, the game mode. Now, I would... I'm a little bit skeptical because it scares me to think how many new mechanics Lilith is introducing into this game mode without anything breaking or without there being imbalances of power out the wazoo because it's impossible for Lilith or Lego for that matter to really, really, really comprehend the ingenuity of our community. And not it's not because they're stupid, it's because the community is insanely smart and it's capable and there's a lot of sly, smart cunning players out there and i mean it in a good way that can come up with like these crazy uh, exploits that um can be really tough now i'm a little bit scared about this new kvk because there's a lot of new mechanics there's a lot of new things and there's also a couple of imbalances that i can already see number one if you cannot teleport freely there is only specific areas you can teleport kind of like an obelisk type of thing that tells me that any non big warrior is going to be left behind it's going to get to a point where you're going to be told as a 40 50 million power player to leave your forward position for a 100 million 90 million power player because they are more capable of fighting than you are and that's something that scares me it scares me that you limit certain mechanics that currently exist in rise of kingdoms that are in theory made to make things more challenging but in practice what it does is it makes it so that the big whales do their thing and the lesser whales to the back number two is um the 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 change in the fact that there are basic mechanics in this game that are amazingly good that you're now kind of changing for for reasons that i don't understand making the map bigger is fantastic why because then you can get to a point where you can spread around the fights a little bit more throughout the map and if they're spread enough you can even get to a point where there is map loading in chunks and then if you're in a certain chunk you don't know what's going on in another chunk and that way you can diminish lag that is fantastic chunk loading is a thing um, it's how uh, role play servers in gta went from 35 players to 200 because they only load a certain portion of the map around the player and so if there's many players in one place it'll get extremely laggy but as long as they're spread across the map the lag is subsided so that is fantastic but I'm worried about the fact that people cannot teleport freely, that what's going to happen is a free-to-play small pets player, hey, even me, or even me, I'm a 90 million power player, I'm nothing, but a player like, uh, like a 40, 50 million power player is going to have to march 10 minutes at a time to get into the fight and or more, and that's that can be problematic, okay? So I'm seeing a little bit of of uh, red light, okay? And I do, of course, give Lilith always, 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 always the benefit of the doubt to prove me wrong. And I truly think that they have come out with something amazing. I really hope that they give an opportunity to a few creators, including hopefully myself, please, Lilith. Leo, that's to you. Chat, go hit up Leo, Rusty Leo in the Discord and be like, yo, Gecko wants a sneak peek of the new KVK. But I hope that they do the same they did with us with Champions of Olympia and kind of like give allow us into a test server to like experiment a little bit some of these mechanics to feel the the mechanics at least just to explain how they work. I think that if Lilith allow 
some of the creators to get into the KVK and experiment with the actual mechanics so we can give you guys guides and explanations on how the mechanics work, not on which pass you should take for victory, but how does a Delric pass look like? What kind of options you have available on the table? Not which ones you will have, period, but if there are, let's say, 10 types of Delric passes, we should be able to give you that information ahead of time so you're just a little bit prepared to see what's coming. Obviously, they shouldn't tell us how they're laid out and all that good stuff, but some of these mechanics, we should be able to show you guys ahead of time to get you hyped as well as to get you informed so you know you don't spend the first couple of days of your KVK making mistakes and ruining the experience for the rest of the event. Because this is going to be a, like every other KBK, it's going to be a month, if not two, 50 days, 49 days is the least that we've ever seen. So if that is the, say, the case and that is the scenario, a simple mistake due to lack of information out there can cause a kingdom to get stuck for two months. And that's not a good thing. So I really hope Lilith kind of give us the opportunity to experiment with these mechanics and, and publish them. Honestly, if I don't get invited into it, I wouldn't be too surprised. Um, there are sponsored content creators out there that need to get that love and I understand it. But regardless, I would hope that that would happen. But either way, I am super stoked for this, but I'm taking it with a grain of salt. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of issues like always, and we should always get ready for it. But I really hope this is going to be a truly fun new KVK for us and a truly new experience with brand new mechanics that are going to make us really engage back in the game and really want to get sucked back into the Rise of Kingdoms hype that was always there, right? And give a little bit of flavor to, to a game that got a little bit stale. And so that's my thoughts on the new update. Let me know in the comments down below what you think. I'm Gekko. I'm out of here. Appreciate what's going to do. Drop the like on this video. Subscribe down below. We're trying to get back into it. Smash those likes. Smash those subscribes. Share this video. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Peace.